Welcome to a special episode of Dr. Dominic's show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Our elders say that it's always good for the wind to blow every now and then. Do you know why? Because when the wind blows, it gathers leaves and heaps them by the roadside. <laughs> but, but that is not the first thing that the wind does. What the wind does when it blows is expose the butt of a fowl. Take a look. The Eastern Security Network was formed by government of the Eastern States. <laughs> um, um, Sasha, Sasha, what's wrong with you? Eh? What is wrong with you? Why are you starting from, from this? He wasn't the first person that encountered the wind. Eh? Okay, let's start from the very beginning. Let's start this story from the very beginning. So, the Arewa kingmakers demanded that all the presidential candidates in Nigeria must come for an interview for the job. Excellent. That's what we are talking about. The code is an interactive forum. Interactive. And guess what? <laughs> they showed up. The, the big names. <laughs> they showed up. Bola Tinubu also went. That is when you know that something is important. When Tinubu suspends everything. Doctor's appointment, nurse's appointment, all this appointment with psychologists. With, and showed up. Yes. Now, the first candidate that appeared was Atiku Abubakar. Now, he was the son of the Shah, son of the son of the Shah. You know, he didn't have to worry about anything. He spoke to them in their language. Watch. I think what the average northerner needs is somebody who is from the north and who also understands the other parts of Nigeria. He doesn't need a Yoruba candidate or an Igbo candidate. <laughs> Well, <laughs> you see, I used to think that Atiku was not that bright. But here, he outperformed himself. He did. He told the North something that they did not know. I hate it when politicians tell us what we know. How would he not know that in the last eight years, that Igbo man with a Yoruba mother called Buhari, had presided over Nigeria and destroyed the North. How would they not know if Atiku did not tell them? I don't understand why people were mad at Atiku for what he said. Some were even calling him a bigot. To Fiakwa. I'm like, what? The man married an Igbo woman, Yoruba woman, Hausa woman. Eh? What else do you want from him? As a result of these marriages, his DNA has changed. Itinamala, Apo, and uh, Tuo has wiped out any bigotry cell in him. <laughs> the next fellow that showed up for the job interview was Bolatinubu. Hey, Ashiwajo. <clears throat> the man mesmerized people in that room with one of his greatest speeches ever. But it was when he was asked about climate change and what to do about these demands from the West that he showed his ingenuity. Watch. If you don't guarantee our finances and work with us to stop this, we are not going to comply with your climate change. <laughs> I said, move over, King Solomon. Move over. <laughs> Here comes the Jagaban of Lagos. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Dropping, dropping, dropping. You know, you know, you know the West and this their nonsense climate change um, talk. Must stop. No, be so. After all, after all, we have Sahara Desert. What do we need climate change for? What? <laughs> Wise man. Wise man. <laughs> that was how. Cameroon told Nigeria in 1977 or thereabouts to build a dam on the Niger to avoid flooding. <laughs> Who gave them the right to command Nigeria around? Cameroon? The same thing with the West. 
we can take the heat. By heat, I mean the flooding that is going on across Nigeria today. We lost 600 people due to flooding. And so what? We are 220 million people, for crying out loud. We can afford to lose 100,000 people, and we won't even feel a thing. What? It is Cameroon's uh, climate change. It is Cameroon's dam. What thing concerns us? <laughs> now, <laughs> the other candidate that showed up was Peter B. Now, did you notice that Peter B did not get any tough questions? Because the brother of the, his vice presidential candidate was the moderator. You see? See? Watch. I oh, will be perfectly honest with you. The biggest fear for the North is that your success as president will be the price to be paid for peace and security from the Southeast. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Softball questions. Softball. You would, you would think Obi will shine with that one, but he didn't. Here is Peter Obi's answer. Take a look. I have never, and I'll say it anywhere, please do not vote for me because I'm an Igbo man. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of nonsense answer is that? Yeah? The question was very simple. That insecurity in the East is why Nigeria is the poorest poverty capital of the world. Yes. How will you assure the not that your presidency will not end that insecurity? Because we don't really want it to end. That was the question. I don't see anything confusing in that carefully crafted question. Nothing. Now, when Arewa asked Toby why he has not condemned the activities of IPOB's ESN, he brought the house down with his answer. Take a look. The Eastern Security Network was formed by government of the Eastern States. They are the governors who formed security things. How can I go and condemn them? <laughs> now, 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 this man, this man Obi is a genius, underrated. I wonder where he gets um, these uh, smart answers to any question thrown at him from anywhere. I wonder. Do we know? The best advice I got in Anambra State to stop crime in a place called OP Worker was I, I got the advice from a madman. You know, you know, you know, it may actually work, you know. If your job is to cure a mad country, you may find your solution by talking to a madman. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to Have Your Say 247. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. Uh, this is a special edition. Uh, I screwed up. <laughs> Let me start from there. Uh, we were supposed to have this special conversation with Yusuf Abubakar, who is joining us from Australia, but um, I miscalculated the time. Uh, or the day, I know. I knew it was 6 p.m., <laughs> but I thought it would be 6 p.m. tomorrow, but already there in tomorrow, you know, which tells you that the world will never end because God will not be able to pinpoint one particular time to end the world. Anyway, thank you for joining us, all those who are watching. We are going to talk to Yusuf um, for at least an hour. We can bring him back another time. So let me bring in Yusuf Abubakar all the way from Australia. Yusuf, welcome to the show. Good morning, Rudolph. Ah, it's Rudolph. evening here. <laughs> Good evening to all, all our viewers from America. And I know yeah. people in Nigeria, it's nighttime where they are. Nice uh, it's to 9, have you. Yeah, it's 9.32 a.m. in uh, Melbourne, Australia. Wow, so, wow, wow. It's all you can wow. imagine. There are, there are also people in the western part of Australia that are actually 6.32 a.m. Wow, That's wow. Western Australia, which is Perth. So yeah. we are three hours behind. Yeah. And in actual sense, we are also three hours behind New Zealand. In Auckland, they are approximately 12.32 wow. p.m. for Saturday, too. Yeah. So... Yeah, so this is the country called the Down Under. 
Let's down go. under, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's amazing. I've never been there, and um, I I hope one day I will, I will be there. Um, oh. thank you so much for making our time to talk to us. Uh, for those oh. who are watching, Yusuf is my classmate. We went to Federal University of Technology Akure together many many years ago, so it's an honor to have him here on the show. Uh, it's not many many years. A few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, you know. I I went to one uh, space today. What do you got? Twitter space, and people were talking about how much money they paid when they were in in the university in Nigeria. And I was laughing at them. They were talking about fifty thousand. When I was uh, in school, fifty thousand was like enough money to pay for you. So, <laughs> I mean, too much money, you know. Yeah, but that that's exactly to uh, that, that's the fact that most of us don't want to actually let go because. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're paid that time is all about, it's just relative mm -hmm. to what we are today. It's the sign that you're actually improving, it's mm. you're moving forward. So, mm. for those people advocating to go back to that same type of uh, timeline, it doesn't work mm. because mm. the taste today is different from the taste. You can imagine how many of us watch television through Grundy Grand TV. Mm. Today, mm. we are using Samsung, Apple and or whatever you can call what we have today the technology is even more far better so i imagine when people say they want to go back i imagine what type of colors do, do they actually want to watch on tv mm -hmm. a billion billion pixels or they just want to watch uh, 480 pixels so it's just quite a different world entirely so i think the idea of moving backward is only for the weak mind mm -hmm. you know it does not have ways to solve issues mm. to move forward they fall back you understand yeah. mm -hmm. so <clears throat> uh, uh yeah so that's basically my own concept i don't believe in going backwards mm -hmm. all right yeah. let's, let's we are going to cover some topics and and then we get our viewers uh, audience to join us they're already in the studio some of them we want to talk about um how you see nigeria from from australia you know because nigeria is complex and most people are confused about what's going on there maybe we hope maybe people who live far away like where you are or the experiences you have there you, you give us a different you help to give us a different perspective of what we're seeing out of nigeria we're also going to talk about um opportunities you know when before the eighth show you talked to me about opportunities that are in australia that most of our people may not know who are in nigeria so let, let's start with that we'll get our audience involved in a few minutes just in another 10 minutes or five maybe eight minutes so now when you look at nigeria uh, what do you see? Yeah. see uh it's very disappointing very very disappointing uh what nigeria is today not as a not as a country or but as a people you know um uh, i would say basically that uh nigerians don't see much about people like us in australia because most Nigerians only know things about US, Canada, UK. But uh, fortunately enough, Australia is where quite a great number of uh, successful Nigerians actually reside. And I think because of the distance also, it does not actually give that opportunity for Nigerians to actually understand truly the potentials in, in Australia. But in with regards to the way we see Nigeria today, as from my own point of view, I, I would say the governance itself has been a complete failure from the local. I wouldn't possibly put the local government into this particular aspect here because the local government, their faults, is not basically from the local government itself. It's actually from the two other tiers of the, the, the government, the state and the central government, which is Abuja or Asuro, as they call it. So those two arms itself is a complete disgrace, complete disappointment itself. When you look at the amount of allocations that have been given to states alone, some of these states will have actually shown a lot of proof of what some people are actually out advocating about separation. Some of these states could have proven to the actually central government, this is what we could do with this little amount of allocation they are giving to us. But you can't actually find any of this stuff anywhere in nigeria as, as a whole entirely in the state then you have the central government itself which unfortunately i would say it's basically derived from the so-called educated elites 
as far back as 2015, both in Nigeria and outside Nigeria itself. They advocated for this particular government to come into place since 2015. One of the biggest problems that face Nigeria today is that we do not actually, as Nigerians, understand the difference of having a driver and having infrastructures. When people try to build drivers in order for infrastructures to be built later in the future on it, we use our hunger to make judgments. And that was a failure from the bunch from 2015 to, to date. Building infrastructures where there is no drivers to actually manage those infrastructure is just a complete waste of treasury, complete waste of treasury. Before you actually get a driving license, you need to understand the rules of the road. You need to understand what and what you can do on the road. Then you need to learn how to even start the car, what you do first. These are drivers. You just don't go and buy a car and then go get a license and then you start driving when you have no clue about what and what this car is supposed to take you to. So, uh, like for, for me, I would say basically the way we see Nigeria in this particular dispensation under Buhari is a disappointment and very, very shameful. Now, I know that you, you, um, you know the northern part of the country very well. Um, I was born there. You were born there. Okay. So, yes. why, why is it that uh, Buhari? continues to have the support. You said now that it's a disappointment what happened in the last eight years. Why is it that he continues to have the support of people in the now? See, uh, Rudolph, there's, a, there's an issue with Nigeria. When it comes to education, we tend to, we tend to see education from the eyes of the, the titles we are given from education. Uh, and, and the grammar and grammar we can speak or grammar we can write. Education basically is a, it's just a platform for you to continue learning. You, you keep learning and you keep learning. That is what education is all about. It is how much you are in the education, that is how fast you can learn. It's not about the title. We need to educate ourselves, especially about the North itself. The North is not a, a particular region in Nigeria that believe in experts. It's a collective arm itself. So from the far, especially from the people in the South who have never been in the North or born in the North, they really do. It, sometimes you, you are even born or live in the North, yet you do not actually understand the concept of what the North is about. It's a collective society where people make a decision. And when it comes to the politicians, it has actually come to light what the Norths are. The North are the true aspect of what politics is in Nigeria. Because some of us in the South don't understand what politics is. Politics is all about negotiation. You might tell your people you bring water for them, but at the end of the day, you, when you are in your colleagues, with your colleagues, and you negotiate, you might end up bringing fire. Because that's what they can give to you. It's all about successful negotiation. So when you make decision to put somebody into power, you're putting that person into the power because you believe that person can negotiate on your behalf. Not, the North don't believe in experts. You do not come and tell us that you're going to bring water to us when you win, and then tomorrow you go and bring us schools. That's not what we actually agreed upon when we actually voted for you. So it comes to a shock for people in the South when a, a Northern governor decides to build mosque for 90 million naira. Somebody in the shower, they say, oh, he used 90 million build uh, mosque. Why are you going to build more? That's what they asked him to bring for them. Politics is all about numbers. It's a winning game. If you win and get, get there, you, if you want to change what you promise, you need to go back and negotiate with them and tell them, see, make them see reasons why your school is better. Not just bring school to them when they didn't actually agree on uh, on that when they voted for you. So that's the politics in the North. So people get it wrong when they start blaming those in the leadership in the North for doing what they see they do. They don't do it because they want to do it. It's because that's what the people asked to be given. And that's what they are given. 
But but and people someone will say someone will say is leadership not showing the way? Is it following the the people? Is it not showing the way? They, they say, no. of that. Yeah, this is a problem with Nigeria. We tend to mix the language English. We have to be very careful with English. Leaders, when I make use of Nigeria, I'm not talking about I'm talking about majority because everything in Nigeria today is 99%. When it is good, it's 99%. When it is bad, it's 99%. So we don't talk about the 1%. Nigerians should be very careful about the when they use terms. The sh leaders are not born in Nigeria. We born, we have, we, we create rulers. We don't create leaders. So when we, we, we should make sure we use the right terms and right words when we make description of things we're doing. We cannot lead in Nigeria. Rudolf, you know quite well that to lead, you show by example. To rule, you dominate people. What do you see in Nigeria today? Who is showing by example in Nigeria? Nobody. Everybody that rules from local government council to local government chairman to governor to president, they rule. They dominate people. They oppress people. So we make this mistake of always thinking that we're going to make a change. A change by how? We can't. When the society we are born into does not actually create leaders, we create rulers. Right from the home, in an average Nigerian home, it is rulership. It's either the husband is dominating the wife or the wife is dominating the husband. Unfortunately, children never mm. dominate any of the two. So it's all about domination. And that domination is what is in our DNA. We grow up to do it. We succeed from primary, from secondary school as class one to become prefects, all because, not because we want to add value, just because we want to take revenge for all the people, all the stuff we went through as class one students. There's no love in it. So it's very difficult for us to come here and sit down and start saying that this politician, this, 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 they are rulers. So in order for you to actually go in with this system of rulership, you need to find a way to negotiate with them. Until you change the system from rulership to leadership, then you can compare yourself because Nigerians are fond of doing comparison. Oh, the America do this or UK do that. No, don't compare those because the simple term of what they live on is you don't exist with it. You are actually in a rulership society. Now, let me take, let me just move away from this and go into what is actually trending in Nigeria today, the OB, obedience and uh, all the competition in the three arms of government. One of the biggest reasons Nigeria will find it difficult to succeed, even with OB as president. As I can see that OB is surrounded by youths, but the youths are also the problem of Nigeria, just like the elders are. The first and foremost failure in Nigeria is the lack of respect to women. Lack of inclusiveness of women in the entire system from government, production, manufacturing, whatever you name. Yeah, we are. We have a, a country where 60 to 65% of our population are women. But they are actually on the third, third level or fourth level of the system itself. What we are facing in Nigeria today, for it to happen, you use the youths to do it. The elders, the article, the, the OB, the Tinubu, and all, their foot soldiers are youths. Their foot soldiers are youths. I'm not saying that the youths are not good or they're not ready to do what they're supposed to do. But that's not the focus. The focus is how to bring this other part of our society, which is more of emotional tendency that can put a little bit of calmness, like uh, Rema said in his music, baby, calm down. To calm the society down is the women aspect of it. The respect for women and the placement of equality and equal staple for women. There and then, you will start building a real society itself. That's the drive I'm talking about. We are not looking and focusing on that. Just like you, the OB is pushing with the youth, OB should also be pushing with women. The women part of it, take, take countries like you, you look at the successful countries in the world, the US. 
the uh, play Australia, uh, Canada, and all this stuff. The Scandinavians, look at the society in the Scandinavian countries, the success in Sweden, Denmark, Norway. These are all women driven. Finland, all women driven. Australia, yeah, Canada, and all this stuff. These are society run strictly by leadership and historical values they have. But when you look at countries where failures are just eminent, it's just basically because of lack of respect for women. Hmm. Now, let, let me, let me, yeah, I want to, I want to get into, I know that our audience, they want to get involved in this conversation, but I want to, I want to ask you this. Being that you've lived in Australia for a while, um, if you look at this political system there, is there anything that Nigeria could probably um, borrow from that will help Nigeria to, to make its own political system function in a better way? Australia's society is a borrowed society from the British. We are not different from them. It's just that this political system is different. We are running a presidential. Uh, Nigeria is running presidential. Australia is running parliamentary. The problem here is that we are not the same. We have a language barrier. In this particular part of the world, we have one simple thing that makes us strive, English language. We all speak one language, and that's basically it. In Nigeria, we have certain things that cannot make us, no matter what we borrow, it comes back and crash. We have borrowed a lot in Nigeria. I think it's high time we actually find a way to fix our own problem, our own way. Because the borrowing is actually causing a problem for us. Now, like one of your videos I watched where somebody is talking about uh, wanting their, uh, Tinubu is talking about securing money before them, in order for them to do climate change. <laughs> for goodness sake, you know, this is exactly the, the rulership mentality. Because these people don't think. Because they don't do anything by example. They don't lead, they don't come out to do things in order for them to see how it feels. They just talk. So in, 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 when we talk about borrowing, 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 there's no borrowing in this aspect. There's nothing the same with us here because we, we are living in, in, a, in an historical society that was actually started about 100 years ago. And they've gotten to this particular level itself. There are failures in, in, in governance here, but people are punished for it. They are not rewarded for it. And you, you, let me be very frank with you. That same uh, thing that we fight in Nigeria, tribalism and tribe, if you look at, if you look deeply, which is in the British society today, if you look deeply into it, the reason why the British government is having their problem today is because they refuse to put a brown face as a prime minister. They did all the whole permutation and end up with the wrong person and end up in an African economy in 40 days. It crashed on their face because they didn't want to put a brown face. So there they played their own structural racism in a hidden form and it affected them. But somehow along the line, because of the same driver they built, the person they put decided to resign because she don't feel carry the load for her anymore. She just work and go become housewife back. It's as simple as that. But in Nigeria, somebody will still be dragging their feet and let millions die. So uh, there's no way we can borrow anything. We just need to find a way to find a way to work with things. We can't be comparing the South of Nigeria with the North. You see, in the North, no matter how educated you are, you can't challenge a, a cleric. We should respect that. I know it's not good, but that's the way their society wants to work. We can still blend with it. They have it in Malaysia. People, there are certain regions that are Islamic, but yet the whole central system works because of one single thing, respect. Respect for the minority, respect for the majority. You don't just pick and choose who you want to tram trample with. It's as simple as that. So the, the fact here is that we, Everything can work in Nigeria, but it's just a basic aspect of 
we respecting people and doing exactly what the people, it's not what experts or what few people say, what the people want. Because Nigerians are very, very hardworking people, very, very successful people if they're given the platform to do what they want to do. Most of us will not be outside here today if the platform was right. We don't need anything of that nature, but the problem there, the platform is not there in Nigeria. That is what we are lacking. There's no respect. There's no respect at all. Okay, um, we're going to bring our audience to get involved. Um, while, while I bring them up, I want to ask you, um, how has it been in Australia living there? And um, what are the opportunities there? And do you think you will ever come back to Nigeria to live? <laughs> uh, see, uh, I'm not that one of those people that want to die and be buried in Nigeria. No, sorry, I won't be doing so, that. Um, and uh, secondly, I, 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 I always love to come back to Nigeria, but the reason why I did not travel since 2015 mm -hmm. back to Nigeria is because I cannot live in a society where an illiterate leads. I can't. So that makes it, uh, makes my, my entire family a waste because I was sent to school for a good reason. And uh, I, I can't, I can't see myself. I know my family members, my parents, my, my, my mom died. I did not go to Nigeria to bury her because of this simple reason. I'm a man of principle. I see it as clear as it is. If you are led by a goat, you're all goats. It's as simple as ABC. There's no point about it. So me coming to Nigeria for a visit, it's like giving an acknowledgement of support to what the government is or what the government is doing or who the government is. I have no personal beef with the with the, the, the president or whatever he is in Nigeria, but I just don't see myself as a human being being ruled by somebody like that. It makes no sense. It's as simple as that. But you see, democracy is a, where the opportunity, where even devil will have supports and followers. It's a good thing. But it's a wrong thing for educated people to converse for the wrong thing simply because of, because of livelihood or because of pride. It's very, very wrong. It's either better you stay behind and not vote or campaign than you campaigning for somebody you know will make the life of millions miserable. It's wrong. Very, very wrong. I won't support that. All right. I, will come to, I will come to Nigeria when... A new, a new when who when who becomes president? See, to be very frank with you, this is my own opinion, and don't take it, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> Obi is the right person for Nigeria. Don't get everything from every indices. Obi is the right person, but let truth be told because one of the things with Nigeria is that they cannot differentiate truth and facts. Facts are written. Truth is what your perception believe or what you say you saw. So these are the two different things. What I see in, the, in, in that country today is that the only person that can actually put that country together and stand is Atiku. Because the problem here is this. We have an Hydra. A Hydra that lives in our society calls the Nigerian military. It's the greatest threat that country has ever known, the Nigerian military. I am, I might be wrong. I see an OB coming into power and then some set of idiots, just like the same idiots that actually cut short the, the Nigeria society from 1960 by bringing in the first coup and turning the whole country into what it is today. The same thing will happen with Obi. I'm not praying for it to happen for him, but that's what I foresee if Obi becomes president. These assholes will make excuse, and that's the reason why they put all their so-called retired generals around the country as ambassadors to the neighboring countries around us. Hmm. So, Atiku is the only person that knows the ball game that knows the people, that knows just exactly how Obasanjo made them to calm down and not come into government 
Atiku is the only one that has that same mentality. Obi is an auto, is, is an entrepreneur. He has the brain to bring Nigeria into what it is today. But the platform under him is very shaky. You know, when Jonathan told you there were there were evils in Asu Rock, people were laughing. You, Rudolph, you and your people in press, you were laughing at them and saying that they, they, they failed, they did this, they did that. But those are the truths. We have a lot of hydras in Nigeria. A lot of people that will sabotage you from the beginning and OB has that problem. I know Obasanjo is there with him, but what do, I, what do you expect Obasanjo? Obasanjo can only go when there is a table for him to discuss, to settle matter. If there is no matter to settle, he will not be useful. So my fear is that if we get our choice, which is Obi, will he last? That's the problem. So the only person that actually seriously have the opportunity and chance to win is Atiku. And he's, winning, he's going to win this election not because he's the chosen one. It's because he has the infrastructure or the structure to do the Nigerian thing in election. I'm not saying that it's rigging, you know, because rigging, every have, everybody has opportunity to rig Nigeria because that's the only way you win election very well in Nigeria. Everybody has the opportunity to do so. Yeah, so if you don't have enough to do it, so be it, because Nigeria is a very forget, forgetful nation. Seven days, that's how we do things in seven days, naming ceremony, burial, everything in seven days, we forget and we'll move on. So that's basically that's basically my own opinion. I'm not saying that's the day, but for me, trust truly, if I want somebody to win, I would prefer Obi. I'm a PDP member, but that's what I, that's what my opinion is. Okay, all right. Yeah. Let, let's let's go to our, our audience and let them participate. I will also ask you more questions and as we go, Mazam, welcome to the show. Uh, unmute yourself, Mazam. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rudolph. Uh, thank you, Mr. Abubakar. Uh, you have said a lot, which is quite uh, true. Although uh, my fear with uh, Atiku is one thing. Atiku is a fine candidate. Yes, he is. He knows Nigeria, I think, uh, far better than uh Obi and based on his uh, uh, political history, he was once the uh, vice president, so I believe he knows so much. But there's one thing I am scared of when it comes to Atiku, because Atiku is a friend to both the people that have put Nigeria to where it is today, the ones that are in APC and the ones that are in PDP. And these two people, if you put them together, do these two set of people uh, are fighting to uh, retain the status quo. So, and I see Atiku being the unifier is not uh, mm -hmm. someone who unify the country per se, but instead he will end up unifying both APC and PDP together. And that is when they will come and finish us. That is the truth, because that is what we are, we, are, we are afraid of. And these people will come, APC and PDP will unite. We all know that their goal game is to defect from one party to another and then join the president and become sense again, just like it is in, a, a, in APC now. If you move from PDP and join APC, you have become a saint. So your sins will be forgiven. And these same people will enjoy the proceeds of looting and the ones they have looted, they will continue to loot. So that's my fear for uh, Atiku to come in. Uh, with Obi, the, another fear for me is that the way Obi is going, just like Femi Falana said, that he should embrace the people and leave the owners of Nigeria. Because at the moment, the people are the ones standing by him. So I know that particularly not as a, as, as a region, or not as a, as, as, as a region, he does not really know 
much about the north. And the same people that will, 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 the people that will guide him through and tell him things that are needed to be done in the north are northerners. So just like what happened to Good Love Jonathan, it might actually happen to him. The same people advising Good Love on insecurity are the same people using that insecurity to embezzle public funds, meant for embezzled uh, funds meant for security. So this is one of the my fear for him. I think, but for Tinibu, <laughs> that one, I don't know what to say <laughs> because. It is his age. I'm, I'm seeing that we are going to repeat another Buhari or even a, a, a worse, a worse uh, version of Buhari. That's what me I'm seeing. That's my opinion. So right. that is, and particularly on the Northern issue, you said something that is uh, that uh, the Northerners have something uh, in particular that they negotiate. Yes, not is good with negotiation. And particularly what Buhari is doing, like Rudolf, you have asked, why is not st still uh, supporting Buhari? Yes, because uh, if you look at it, Buhari is doing the bit of that. He's doing what majority really want. That's the politicians, those that are in power, those that controls the north. Most of them are enjoying what Buhari is doing to them. The only I, people that are com complaining are the masses. Yeah, the masses. So that is it. If you see people complaining, are the masses. They are the ones that, and we cannot, the Northerners, we are raised not to, not to challenge our leaders. Whatsoever they say, we accept it, we take it that way. That's okay, all. Mazam, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Yusuf, I know that Mazam is also from the North, and he understands um the, 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 but do you think that his assessment is, is right in terms of um, the masses? I was thinking that the masses are the ones who are actually behind Buhari. They see them, you know, running around. No, no, no. no, no, no. Rudolph, yeah, they are being controlled. <laughs> they they are being controlled by the elites. Yeah, so, Rudolph, let, let me tell you one thing. My, I was, like I said before, I was born and brought up in Kano. And I wasn't just uh, born. Uh, my dad was actually advisor to Adobe Haro. They went to school together. The first abattoir in Kano State was built by my dad. Now, the, the thing you need to understand, my own father contested election in Kano State. I was named Yusuf after my Tama Yusuf, who was actually my godfather during my naming ceremony. So, I was born in Kotoro. But I lived in Sabongeri. But I lived in But the mosque is just directly at the end of my street, the major mosque itself on France Road. My dad also we live on that same street. Other stuff that we do we do in with the, for the Emirates and all the stuff. My dad was a was not just an advisor, he was also a title man in the palace. But he was originally from Edo State. This is a tricky part, you have to understand. Nigeria was a very, very lovely country. Lovely country. Before shit happens. But the unfortunate thing is that at that time when we were lovely, we were very, very lazy. Not very creative in, in doing things. That's why it cost us a lot when we start realizing things, we start doing things. What Mazar have said is actually the truth. The masses, we, we are trained to follow our leaders. My father was in MPN, I was in PRP. Because I went to school in the core section of the city, the closed city itself. That's where I went to school. I went to GSS Gwale. Now, the thing there is this. We were never trained to challenge our leaders. So when you see youths coming out for Buhari's campaign or Buhari's trip into Casino and all the stuff. It's because the head of the Ungwa has told them to come. Buhari is not there every day when they are being fed. It is somebody that feeds them. And when that person calls upon you to come and do just one duty, who are you to say, no, you're not coming? 
you will close your shop. You will close everything and come and shout for just that one day and go back. That's the job. It's shouting now. Everything finished, everybody goes back. But the truth of the matter here is this. Elections, even Rudolph, in your own village, somebody is there that controls. You don't see them. But come the night when they start making decisions, and as some INEC people have come openly told many of us here, they count from there, they go and count again somewhere because certain people have done certain things. This is the rigging I'm talking about. It might not happen in your ward, your little ward. Your ward is not the number. But when everything comes together in your office, people play the game they want to play. And that's where this thing is lost. So, but we are not saying that this, we, uh, what, what is happening in the North is good. It's not that it is good. It's a tradition. It's a tradition. And as we all know, there's a difference between tradition and culture. Traditions are very, very hard to change. Traditions are very, very hard to, 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 to come by with. But you can make changes to culture. But tradition, no. The Aosa man's Agbada can be changed, which is his, uh, which is his uh, clothing. It can be changed any time. But this tradition of respecting a cleric over somebody that is a professor is already there. It's as simple as that. So my take here is this. Like we all, let's let's just call a spade a spade. It's opinion. We are not actually going to judge people based on it. Atiku, let's take example somewhere like Delta State, where you have the vice president to Atiku. Who do you think openly in Niger, in Niger Delta State will win the election between on uh, Obi and Atiku in Niger Delta? Now, uh, one, thing you should, now, one thing you should understand, winning a state is one thing. Getting 25% is another thing. You are required to get 25% from a state in order for you to be counted forward. That's the election. That alone in Niger Delta itself, for Obi to get 25% in Niger Delta, Rudolph, I'm betting you, it's going to be tough except something else is done out of it. Mm. Forget about what is actually being said. These are the little things that are actually we need to follow. Because if you have a state like Niger Delta coming up to say that there are one million, and then you have one million people coming to match for B, who are the people that are going to vote for Atiku? So we need to be very, very careful about this thing. I wish Obi to win, but like I told you before, my fear is not about him winning. It's about him, about them letting him to rule. That's another point of call. Right. All right. All right. Thank you. So um, can I add uh, something, please? Uh, then, just one minute. <laughs> I wanted to go to other people. You can you can hang around, you know, we'll get back All right. to you. Okay. Okay, no problem. Okay. All right. Ovia, you are next. Thank you, uh, Mr. Yesu, for you know being with us this uh, well evening from 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 my end. Uh, two questions. You kind of fault Buari, or let me say this administration for putting uh, retirement retired military guys to be the ambassador to our neighboring countries. You fault them because you know that the our foreign counterpart, I'm talking about the, the, the higher mighty, the France, German, and all that, most of the ambassadors to those neighboring countries are also retired military guys, especially that those that are coming from France. Did you know that before you actually criticizing what, what is doing? Oh, you don't know. That's one. Two, you said something about the Nigerian youth, which and the women. Let me focus on the women that... Uh, the system entirely forget about them. I totally agree with you, but to me, I don't think it's just political. It has to do with our religion and our culture that actually getting the, the, the woman out of the whole playing field. You also point out the Nigerian news, but you being living, living in Australia that practice the other side of a uh, uh, government that we are practicing, which is uh, the parliamentary, and we are practicing the uh, presidential system. Do you think the system, the way 
the Nigerian design it, have room for the Nigerian youth at this particular time. Maybe as we evolve, as a democracy evolve, maybe, but at this point in time, do you think the ordinary Nigerian youth actually have a say the way the process is set up? And do you think the average Nigerian understand the party, the party political system that we are practicing? I say, uh, Sorry, uh, Rudolph, what was his name again? Because he uh, has. Uh, Kwan so you can call him Kwan Kwasso, but he's so okay. uh, Kwan Kwasso, uh, which who is a current governor, a former governor of my state. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, is a yeah is a thing. First of all, ambassadors, ambassadorial position are diplomatic. They are diplomatic. They are not in in every embassy or high commission Nigeria has. There is a there is a section for security. If you want to put a retired soldier to go and be head of security, that is fine. If you want to, if you now decide to put them as an ambassador, on what grounds? You see, this is one of the things that Jonathan had as a problem when people when when politicians failed in Nigeria, he makes them ambassadors in the country. Somebody that cannot win a ticket in your party, you are making him an ambassador. On what ground? What, what is that qualification? If his own village people don't like him, how will people outside like him? Now, you're taking a failure, a set of people that are actually depriving Nigeria of being what they are supposed to be. You need to look at the inner side of This is why I'm saying that most Nigerians, they know things they follow things that are written by opinion. Opinion writers writing things. There are two types of stories in Nigeria. Those that are born into it, that have it, and those that just sit down and imagine things and start writing because they think they are good writers. And people feed on that. There's a particular reason why Buhari put all these people, forget about what other people did. These people are actually encroaching for the future. They are not doing it for the purpose of the country. We were we are fighting we are fighting insurgency. What have they actually helped in doing in stopping that from happening? They use that pretext to put that there. No, it is not. Come 2023, you will see the real reason why these guys are actually made ambassador. Forget about France. Every other country outside knows the benefit of what these people are planning. You either be on this side or that side, whichever one wins, you just join, jump ship. That is what the Western world does. They are there for themselves. They're not there for you. So if the plan of these people work, we go with them. That's what the people want. We, every international, every country wants Nigeria to be what Nigeria is. Remain the way it is. The status quo. Status quo. Let the money keep running away. Let them keep eating. Uh, uh, Tenubu wants uh, his finance to be guaranteed so that his money will continue flowing because he wants to do climate change for Nigeria. Go and look at the... Um, the I, I was watching a video for the, the amount of volume of water in coming close to Ted Milan Bridge. The volume of water into the Atlantic Ocean alone. And this guy is sitting down waiting for money. To, if they give him the whole money, how is he going to stop that stuff? How is he going to do it? That's one part. My brother, there's nothing against, uh, like I said, I don't have any personal issue with Buhari, but he has never in his life shown one outer of skill in rulership, leadership, call it whatever you want to call it, in his life. He was born into autocracy. He was born into a rulership society where all he does is dominate. He doesn't even know what happens around him. And like you rightly said, like Mazam said, he discuss with people he negotiates with. Those are his negotiators. The people, the main people that come to represent their people. That's who Buhari deals with. All the other things, those uh, masses you see there, he doesn't recognize them. He doesn't know them. So it is the main people, and those people are there. The rest is so, Kayari, Funtua, and all those people. These are the people he discuss. You think it is just by mere chance that Gambari was taken away from United Nations and come to make... Uh, uh, replace Kayari? No, it wasn't. Gambari has been in United Nations since making sure that everything Nigeria goes to United Nations to fight, it's never heard. 
He has served the country so diligently well and put us in this position we are in. And he has not been brought to come into Asurok to sit. Most of you don't know these people closely, like some of us that were born into them. They, these guys don't have anything to serve. They are just there to do what, they, how will I put it? You know, I, 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 that woman from Lagos said the Igbo boys are cults in overseas. These are cults. These are the same cults that feeds on her too, that she doesn't understand. So it is very, very shocking that we will, we will sit down and we think that, like you said, the youths. I don't have problem with the youths. The youths also have, the youths include both female and male. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm talking about is that we have the male society in Nigeria, which is about 40%. And we have the 60% who are women. And the entire women are disrespected. They are not actually equally placed in the society. And that's the reason why we are having problem. Look at the society around you where most of us live. They've moved away from this thing. Women are in this and it is thriving. Today, churches, mosques, are no more place where God is actually practiced. People practice it in hospitals, aged care, disability homes. They give, they show humanity to human beings. They don't go to church to pray to God. They give to God where God has given them success. They share that with you. You go into the Western world today, their church is hospital. Their church is aged care, disability homes. They take care of the vulnerable people. Because that's what God expects you as human beings to do. We are still in the society where we go to church and ring bells and shout and do everything. Meanwhile, half of them are hungry. So it's just some of those things that we need. We cannot sit down and start saying that uh, these things will fix themselves from gov governance. No, it is the people that needs to actually rebrand themselves. They need to start looking, starting from their home. You cannot pretend you abuse your wife and children at home and you come outside and say you want to show kindness to people outside when you, got, you can't even do it in your own house. If you start from your own house, it will gradually grow. It becomes a norm. Every child in Nigeria today is born to dominate another child when they come out of their own freedom. All right. So that's the society we live in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf. Let, let's, let's hear from um, uh, Pansat. I, I'm not going according to the, 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 the stage, how people came in, but I'm, uh, there's someone I wanted to get to, Omoria. He's been coming in and out. You know, when he comes next, I'll get him to, I know he's driving. Pansat, go ahead. Thank you very much, Rudolph. Let me uh, first uh, uh, apologize. I'm up here high in the mountains of Hollywood. There's no video transmission I would uh, perhaps tomorrow try to come on so I could really make my points. Uh, I will be uh, taking up on um, Mr. Yus Yusuf Abubakar. You know, when we're talking about the situation of Nigeria today, we have to really look at the entire thing. We're in trouble. We have a country that is in trouble. We have to resolve this problem this time around. There's no equivocation sitting on the fence. Need picking. All right? You can hold two positions that are diametrically opposed to one another. If you're going to be against Buhari, you have to be against, uh, 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 what's his name? Both Tinibu and Atiku. There's no way you're going to be against Buhari and your photos too. You're just playing with our intelligence, right? We're serious this time. We're going to take that country back. So I'm going to be, first of all, let me appreciate that you're here and at least you're progressive to an extent. But it, it, you, you, you demean everything you're saying when, you, when you're talking about Atiku. Is it his guidance? His, his direction? What is it? So we have a revolution, but it's a Nigerian kind of revolution. Because all these, our enemies are very, very lucky about one thing. We don't have a, a disciplined and educated populace, right? Because what you're talking about, Tinibu, who are you talking about? You're talking about APC, right? That is who we have now. 
Now, the thing that gets me frustrated and why I get upset when I come onto this platform is that we have enemies from France to the United Kingdom. Our continent should be the best. We're educated we're in, the, in, in, in these uh, first, first world countries. So instead of us actually attacking our enemies and dealing with them, somebody like Macron or uh, whoever they have at the, in, uh, at the United Kingdom, where they, they have, they're trying to do a kingship, autocratic king in the 21st century, but they are neocolonizing us in Nigeria with a bunch of desert bastards, right? So we're fighting among ourselves. I listened to Mr. Mazam, who I'm so happy because we, Southeasterners, we we can't really talk that much. We need people like Yusuf Abubakar and Mazam to take the mantle and, and come on and say, you know what? It's over. We, we, we're going to make the Nigeria good. Because if I say something as a Southeasterner, I'm a, I'm for B because I'm of my tribe. I've been in the United States for a long time. Tribe doesn't mean anything unless, unless there is injustice. I'm a contra. When, when uh, South America was having problems, I support the contra fight. In the United Kingdom, when you have the, the, the Northern Ireland looking for their freedom, I'm, I, I support them. So let me, we don't have all day. Perhaps in the next few minutes, I'm going to be urged to round up. Let, yeah, me, let, yeah. me, let, let me let me say we let me go to Obi for example. Having said earlier that we need Yusuf, Abubakar, and Mazam and people like that to step up, take the lead. We're gonna follow you, but don't sit on the fence talking nonsense about Atiku can do this, Obi cannot do this because the, you have a choice this time. You're gonna do the right thing. That selection cannot be rigged. If you rig it, we're gonna come after you from diaspora. Just like Iraq of 2001, we're gonna take our country back. We're gonna do it democratically. If you if you rig it, then we're gonna come after you. So let me let me say that Obi, for example, for openers, has transformed the political dialogue in the country. He's a Democrat. He's been all over the place pushing his agenda to the forefront of of the uh, larger discussion. Now, his impetus was all relating focus on two broad areas of national dysfunction, the corrosive corruption in the country and, and his mantra of going from uh, uh, consumption to production. All right. So he, he's talked about how the, 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 uh, uh, these elites, the degree to which their politics are bad rather than ameliorate the economic in, inequality and in dislocation which is killing off our collective sense of opportunity and hope in the country. Most, a lot of us are in diaspora with awesome talents. It's like we're, 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 we're in uh, exile. So the, the youth have already done what they're supposed to do. Democratically, they have organized and they've pinned their hope on OB, who is... Not my kind of candidate, but I, I'm, I'm compromising. Obi is not uh, my kind of candidate because, uh, let me, Rudolph, just give me one minute, and I, I, I appreciate your program and what you're doing, but what we have to do now, our problem are actually people who are sitting on the fence. We have to take the country back. We, okay. I mean, you, you cannot just slash everybody's hope by recommending somebody like, like Atiku, who's never, ever going to be the president of that country. I can assure you that. All right, so what we're trying to avoid is war. If, if they rig it, it's war. We want to avoid that. Let them compete. Let INEC, not just INEC, everybody else, international observers, those of us in diaspora, determine who won that election. That's, it's not going to be a monolith, you know, where INEC determines who won it. When we, when we determine that the election was rigged, we're gonna deal with every corporate in that country. I'm telling you right now, get ready for that. So it's not like we're not sitting on our, on our knees begging for you to do the right thing. Do the right thing. If you don't do the right thing, the other option is not that somebody who didn't win it 
assumes the office of that country. It's not gonna happen. It's never gonna happen again. I'm telling you right now. So okay. I, I hope you come back to me again because I had two other points that I want to make before I exit the stage. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Yusuf. When you respond, I also want you to address this issue of um, what do you, what do you think about uh, inroads? So be probably um, has made or needs to make in the north because it's um, it's it's easy to look at what's going on and um, how do you assess its reach in the north? Uh, yeah, first of all, Rudolph, let me talk to my brother, tell my brother Pansat. Pansat, I am not advocating that an article should win. Like I said before opening, I gave my reasons for each individual person. I never actually even suggested or tell you reasons why Tinubu should not win because I didn't even go there. Let, let, let me make it clearly known. And Nigerians, as Nigerians, but like I told Rudolph before, when we use the word Nigeria or Nigerians, we are not generalizing. It's just the fact that if in that country, 99% is everything now. If it's bad, it's 99%. If it is good, it's 99%. So we use one simple term. Because you can't use few or some in Nigeria anymore. Because that's, those things are very little. Now, even this is where democracy is sometimes called a godly process. It's a God process. It's a choice. Even in this world today that God created us and created, even devil have followers, just like God have followers. And God, not, God is not angry. He just wait at the end of the day when you die, you know who win. That's as simple as that. Devil has a choice. So in democracy, article Obi, Tinubu, Kwampaso, everybody has got that same platform. But in the Nigerian context, as we all know, which person is saying if they rig, they will do this, they will do that. If there is a chance, you know the system is there, use it. And use it and never be, that don't be caught. Because if you come back and start crying rigging in a society where people forget in seven days, it's gone. We all were here. We were, we were here alive when Imo state election was given to fourth person. This is a state with the brightest mind in the country. They went quiet. They went quiet. Nothing happened. Because they say it's the law. So let's not get angry or personal or anything. This is not that issue because that's not what we are here for. But what we hear is that we're trying to be very truthful to ourselves on what is on the ground. None of us here wish for anything bad to come. We want the country to change. Not even change. We want it to transform into a better society. Look at it. Even in this hardship, Nigerians are still doing greater things. Individually, they are doing greater things. But in the sense of the aspect of the gov governance itself. Like I started before, I do not blame anything to local government because they, they've never been given the opportunity. But the state and the federal government has failed the entire nation, those two arms. They failed, woefully, shamefully, everything you can say. But when it comes to election, don't go coming thinking that Kanu, uh, uh, what do you call it, Ikeja, uh, Enugu, Yenogua, and all those cities are where the election is determined. No, they are not determined there. They are determined in Rano, uh, 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 Gezawa, uh, what they call it, Aguleri, and all those places. That is, that, that's where the elections are determined. So you can, you can do all whatever you want to do in a 3 million uh, volume state uh, capital. But the little, little areas that comes, that is it. Now, remember, like I said before, this is a presidential race that has a mathematical calculation. You do not need to have 100% for each of the states. You just need to get 25% of the counts from each state. And your 25% is counted as one. That is the Nigerian presidential election. Get it clear. Now, look at the permutation, the manipulation, and then see what it is there. 
PDP is having their own headache now because everybody is trying to negotiate position and office. That's the weakest game. Everybody is trying to negotiate. They will come to that time when everything will be quiet. And we will not even remember if they pay you, if they sweet us. Nobody will remember because these people will be in their position already. That yeah, is excuse me. Could I come in right there? Thank you. Uh, look, I, I, by the way, I agree. Yeah. Oh, that's that? Yes, sir. No, 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 well, okay, we don't, uh, we just want to get to other people because there are so many I, people. I, I will make it very succinct and very fast right here. Let, let me just uh, uh, talk to Mr. Abubakar on that. Look, we can't pretend that the Electoral Act of 2022 is not there. It's there. We have, we, the, the, what we held before is not holding today. It's going to take a while for people to understand that. You cannot vote twice. And you have to go in there and cast your vote this time. And there'll be forensic uh, uh, residue. Yeah, right? but, but you vote. Uh, sir, let me stop you. Let me, let me yeah. say it. Um, yeah. The system you're counting on, how are you sure that the, that day the machines will work? I mean, you, you are sure that it won't work. Yeah, but that's what I'm yeah. trying to say. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Yeah, if you, I would recommend uh, America 2020. Uh, pardon? No, but go ahead. Say, I say machine working America 2020, but still, they still rig the election. So what yeah, I, yeah, no, but there is an electoral act right now, okay? And that's, that's if you, uh, by the way, I recommend Mr. Igini that you should Google him and look, listen to what he's saying because he makes the points and he has the act to follow. And there's been elections since that act was passed. And trust me, even incumbent governors have lost uh, much to their chagrin. Okay, that's not going to be anything like that. Listen to me. Hold. Look, right now, Nigerians have an epiphany. They come from the north, the south, the east, the west, Christians and Muslims, and they want this country to move forward and get their act together. Okay, don't, don't make no mistake about that. Yeah, preponderance is in the south. And with Christians, that's true. But sensible Muslims and Northerners are on board. This is no time to equivocate and try to model up the waters and try to portray moral equivalence, that, which is very glaring. When I'm watching anybody, for example, Mr. Babakara and Mazam, those are your, your, your scenes right there. You, 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 you're not all the way over there. You're going to have to get over there because I'm sure you know very well that if you go out there and rig that election all ob and that you have to do is to find out that you did rig it right <laughs> so it's not going to be like before you could smirk all you want that's this is the truth there's been elections since they act first of all this guy the, the senior president's a powerful force he wanted to go and run for office as president and then come back and take his position back as a senate uh, Majority leader, uh, president, senior president. He couldn't do it. There was litigation that's everything. I make everybody. He couldn't do it. In those days, he would have been able to do it. Let me just tell you that the, uh, the Ondo or, or Gun or whatever, they sound the same to me. Okay, but whatever state that was, the governor there wanted to remain in office. He couldn't remain in office because he lost. So now with a small state, maybe uh, Tiribu could buy some people, do all that nonsense he's doing. First of all, it is going to be impossible for Tinibu to win that election or become president. Because what does it say? He rigged it, right? So we're not going to accept that. Two, Atiku is not going to be the president. Take it to the bank. So right now, well, let me let me conclude with this. We, we can be wasting our time on this program, which I think is a very good program. I'm trying to say, let's move on. Because it's only people in the middle who come here trying to waste time. If you're in the middle, get out of here. Go and make up your mind. Then come back. We the, the, we got three or four or five months to get to the election. We don't have time for people in the in uh, on the fence. All okay. Right. So to 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 wrap it up, mm. Rudolph. I'm gonna uh, like I said to you. You're a nice guy, and that's good. We all like you, right? But I am I'm I'm t I'm asking you today to stop. And panel on bodies of Nigerians who are sitting on the fence because we come from a disadvantage. Okay, we, we want to get along with everybody because if we, if we don't do that, we appear to be too 
forceful, too tribal, or all that. But look, it's, it has to be <laughs> mathematical, like he said earlier. It's mathematical. Obi <laughs> has broadened his appeal. He's the only candidate that's broadened his appeal to key constituents, mm. right? He's okay. got the program, right? Okay. So he, unless, if they bring somebody better than Obi, I will support that person. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm, I'm not an idol worshiper, but if one of, one of the, somebody uh, uh, mini stable or somebody he texted right there that if if you bring war that they're ready, well go and get double ready because Saddam Hussein used to talk like that in Iraq of 2001. Okay, he, right. to, he has to Fun, flaunt. Fun flaunt. Let, 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 let me anyway. Thank, uh, thank anyway. you. All right, thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah. Okay, you so please, please, uh, please. Yeah, I think I think uh, Rudolph, let's not. This, this is becoming too personal. I did not. I did not advocate for article or this. But I'm only telling you what my opinion is. Towards I didn't say people should come for to article. I didn't vote for article. So it's a, it's as simple as that. Let's not get this thing to it's uh, when people get become so forceful. It make you make democracy not to be a, a choice thing anymore. So it's as simple as that. So I will not actually advocate on um, back and forth, back and forth, because we've got a lot of people that have been here and patient. So yeah. let me, before we go into politics, because you asked me a question about opportunities in Australia and all the stuff, let me just get that before we go. Now, as you all know, in, 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 in the real world today, COVID has actually exposed a lot into most economy in the world. And one of the drastic things that is, has happened is uh, a work shortage. In our society here in Australia, majority of the casual and part-time jobs are mostly done by students and visitors. And um, because of COVID for two years, specifically in my own state, Victoria, which was the most locked up state in the entire world itself. So basically we went into a full lockdown in order to avoid, because we had close to a thousand plus people died from the illness. So that has generated a lot of uh, job opportunities in the country. Now, initially the way Australian government does bring in skilled workers is they have a quota system. The quota system normally is placed at 120,000 people per year to come all over the world. Now it has been increased to above 200,000. Now, the thing there is that, uh, although most time this country was built on a white, uh, white only principle before, but now it's open to everybody. Now, one of the things that is there is that there's quite a lot of opportunities now, specifically for Africans and Nigerians specifically, with good education and good experience to actually migrate here or even come here and work for some time and go back home. So there are greater opportunities here now, mostly specifically for people that are from 27 years of age to about 45. So it, it, because it gives that an energy of this crowd. So the most important thing here is that you need to have some qualification, uh, basically a, a degree, a, a, any qualification that is at least two or plus year of attendership for that. So, and also, you need, if you are from certain countries, you are required to sit for an English test, which is the ILTS or what they call TOEFL and all the stuff. And you need to set, have a certain score. Minimum score for certain qualifications are 6.5, uh, as high to 7.5 for uh, positions like teaching, which is very, very highly in demand in this country, specifically the male teachers. Because in our society here, yeah, close to 82% teachers are women. There are few men in the teaching world. And that is a great aspect of opportunity for those people with bachelors in education to actually come down here to become teachers. A three years work experience, preferable, and that. Then we have greater rooms for medical doctors, nurses, engineers, specifically in the electrical world, civil world, not chemical or petroleum, because we are moving away from those areas of field. But in the areas of electrical, civil engineering, structural engineer, sustainability engineers, and all the solar powered and all those type of things, we are very, very high in 
demand. Like in my state alone, we have got $155 billion road projects to be built just for my state alone. And civil engineers, structural engineers, electrical engineers are highly needed. Then we have, uh, uh, what do you call it, psychologists, uh, uh, what do you call it, social workers of high demands too. So uh, the immigration process also is very straightforward. So there are different processes in getting into the country. So we have what we call independent, independent skill migration, which is points based. Then there's regional migration, which is actually sponsored by the regional areas. And then there's employer's nomination, which basically means an employer nominates you based on whatever agreements you have agreed on, and you, you come into the country on that contract. So these are the skill opportunities that are open. And it's all about preparing your documents, getting it assessed and all the stuff. And then you go in there. So if you go through the point base, you'll be placed into a pool and employers will now come into that pool and look for you and you go into an agreement and you come. And if you score very high in the skill migration, then you become an independent migrant whereby you're given a permanent residence to come straight into the country. You choose your own job where you want to go. If you go to employer or regional, you'll have an agreement for a certain year period. So maybe two to four years to work in that specific area, that region. And then once you finish, you can now choose to go anywhere you want to go. So you meet that condition. So those are the opportunities that yeah, agriculture is one high area too, because our, our economy here is based on agriculture and mining resources. So these are opportunities that are available here. And this time it is very, very good opportunity for Africans because UK is also chasing for people. Canada is chasing for people. So these are the markets where Australians normally go to get their white people. Now the white people are looking for people, so <laughs> they can't take white people. So there are opportunities for black people now. So I say, take, if you have people out there that want to put Australia forward as your opportunity, uh, Rudolph might give you uh, give my email to, uh, to Rudolph at those time. People that are interested can contact me directly and then I can assign you to reputable migration lawyers that can actually help you for the process and all the stuff and all the stuff. And then we can actually discuss for that on that aspect. So I just wanted to get that out of the way before we get carried away. Because when we start discussing Nigeria, it never ends. So I just want to take out that opportunity. Now, Rudolf, coming back to this Nigerian thing, we need to understand that information is for making decisions. That's what information is. That's why today, information is a skill. That's why you have people working in cloud technology, people working as data analysts, business analysts, because they are using information to do. I work as a data engineer. Information is not for gossiping. It's not used to destroy other people. It's actually used to make the rightful decisions. Now, when we talk about information in Nigeria, there are three or four types of information. The one from Bia Palo, the one that is read from newspaper, the one that you're born with, and the one that you're forced to accept, either by religion, tribe, or collective foolishness. So we need to be very, very factual in our stuff. Not truth, because like I said before, truth is, truth is all about your perception of what you saw. Your eyes can see, but it might, might not be the real thing that you're seeing. But facts is always written, proven, researched, and agreed upon. It's there. You can't change it. So in today's Nigeria, some people are really angry. They're, especially a lot of my people from Southeast, they are angry because they are marginalized. It's the fact. Nobody can actually deny that. It is open. But the truth about it here is this. We all have a different picture of this thing. You see, the Igbo man sees one debt as less important to six million debt. The Hausa man who never saw civil war never believes what the Igbo man is talking about. 
because the war never get, got to its place. Yes, the military that came to fight the Igbos were from the north, but the real northerners did not see the war because the war never went to them. If the war has gone to them, their perspective will be different. The war never went to them. The Yoruba man is angry. Why the hell did the Igbo man bring the war to my place? Forgetting that Lagos was the capital of Nigeria and the war was between Nigeria and the Southeast. And the Bini man is start sitting down there and say, what did I do in this war that six months of my life was Bini was captured and we were going to put through all this thing? There's a lot of confusion in the whole entire country because truth, truth and reconciliation has never happened in Nigeria for people to actually come out and tell what they went through. We are here today, people are making up stories, writing books, writing this and that and that. that. It's bullshit. People are suffering, not because your number is high or your number is low. It's because there is a great injustice that has been done to the entire Nigerian collective. We've never sat down and really tell ourselves the truth, what we all went through. I was actually in my mother's womb when my, 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 my uh, you know, when I was born, this war started somewhere in Vandika, where my mom comes from. My mom is from Cross River, from Ogoja. The moment my mom had me in Kano, I was three months old. My dad has to tell my mom, he say, you have to go back because I don't know what will happen because everything was like chaos. She walked and the war started. We traveled. Every bloody male citizen that lived with my mom in Kano that traveled with her back to Goja were killed. She was saved in the Edo state where she now ended up marrying an Ebini man. And I lived in Benin for nine years before my dad came to pick me back. So when people talk, people don't know. Everybody keeps quiet. Everybody has gone through. We went through hell. I was born in 1965. All this chaos was going on left, right, and center. People were just, just messing up because two people just decided to drag a whole entire nation into their own personal way of solving problems. Yes, we are suffering today, and the Igbos are actually marginalized. That is nothing to be hidden about. Nobody can take that. And some people are thriving on it in politics. Like I said, politics is number because we are playing democracy. We are not doing parliamentary election. We are doing uh, 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 election of presidential election where people are actually winning by numbers. I'm a Man United fan. And no matter whether I lose or win, I remain Man United for life. It's as simple as that. That is how it is. We bring this and we take it. People don't understand it when you become crazy, when you believe in something. It's the belief. We believe, but unfortunately, we do not have faith. We do not have faith in Nigeria today as it stands because we need to separate this belief and this faith. We need to understand that faith is stronger than belief. You have to have faith in God before you believe in God. It's as simple as that. So people don't understand these two differences. And Nigeria is so bad. We make things, we turn things, personalize things when we are trying to discuss. We don't. And democracy is a choice. If you come here and say Tinubu will not win, except you have Juju, that you have seen it, fine. Election will come and we do it. All of us had this belief that 2019 article was going to win the election. Boom! It happened. And we are here today. We are, we are the most peaceful nation. Don't get me wrong. Nigeria is the most peaceful nation. It's just that Little here and there, with people are making noise and doing things. We have been taken advantage of by some political class. And the worst part of it is that military, the Nigerian military, is the backbone of that political class. And if people keep thinking that that particular little collective in our society can be put aside and we can do this magic, we are joking. We are really, really joking. I believe that all the political leaders know everything. Kwan was a, was a defense minister be, one time. He knows the game. But I don't talk about Kwan here. To, to that is an option and all the stuff. 
No, it is not. I'm not giving options for people. Politics, people that have PVC should go and vote. That is their choice. They make the choice, they will live with it. But we will only tell them, we advise them to, to trade wisely. Try it very, very wisely because if you do this time, this time and you do it wrong, is it? Like I started before, I say my choice is OB. But the way things are, if we want Nigeria to be able to manage itself, Article is the only thing that can fight with the structure. That was my turn. I didn't say uh, Article should be president. I just tell you what it is. So this is basically how it is. Let's not just bring down the suffering in the Southeast. It is not something that we can bring. It is, they are marginalized. You know, I'm surprised that people like Tinubu is coming to contest and you have some people from Southwest justifying it because we are very good in writing narrative. We write all these big grammar, people read and start shaking their head. I am not that type of person. I was born and brought up in the North. We are not taught English properly in schools. That is why the colors are bulky and all this stuff. So yes, fine. We, we don't mind. We can even be Malu too. It doesn't really worry us. But the reality of the fact here is this. What Tinubu has done is showing complete disregard to the Southeast. It will have been an opportunity for the uh, for the society in the South is to compete with themselves. APC PDP is just a platform. It's not. It's not really this. Uh, people. People should understand that the people that are actually coming there. Because if you have taken somebody like uh, what's it called, um, the guy that is the African Development Bank uh, stuff. I'm putting him in APC to compete with Obi. I believe even Pansat will be get, having a doubt. Pansat will be having a doubt. It's about the people. And I can see where a lot of them are angry with the people itself. But the thing there is this. The people might look different for you with I, but inside, if you want the system to work, because Obi was vice president to Article one time, there was a reason why he chose to go there. Now he chose not to go because the PDP party messed up because they didn't do the right thing, which is a good thing. And this is an example of a good reason why Obi should be given that opportunity because he's a man that has his own way of life, that he believes he has a principle. Not people that are pushed there because certain people are actually paying their, 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 their ways or negotiating with them. No, you need people that way. But is it is it is the Nigeria people really, really, really seriously going to be there to support and fight for Obi when the time comes? When the real time comes, will they be there to do it? And this is my problem because the foot soldiers of these same people are youths. Look at uh, look at the, the ones in Lagos that were the match for Tinubu. Those people are human beings. They are all also youths. So where are they getting them from? This is the problem we need to face. So let's forget about this picture and all this thing. Let's talk about reality. How do we do a grassroots to understand and make the right people, the right person become the president? That is what we should talk about because the rigging cannot go. The rigging is in the system. It's part of the system. And don't come back and say, oh, the rig election. It was there. Why didn't you find a way to do it too? So that we can actually come now and back you. This is the thing I'm talking about. Bring them out now so that we can actually hold them at home so that they don't go there into the office on that day to read. If you know the people that can do this, reading, let us know so that we go and block them at home so that they don't go to the office that day. All right. Don't. Yeah. I'm sorry, Robert. I was spot on. That's it. That's just it. That's a fact. It's okay. there. It's part of the system. Go okay. do it if you can. Okay, hold on, guys. hold on, guys. We have about 30 minutes. This was supposed to be um, a special edition. It's not like the when we have six hours to, to, to talk on. Uh, tomorrow we have that. You know, 11 tomorrow, we can stay on till whenever. So I, I'll have to run through people and get in, get in the chance to, to talk and ask questions to Yusuf Abubakar. Um, let me come to Kene, you are next. Hello, Dr. Damages. Good evening. Mm. And uh, Mr. Yusuf, good evening. Um, uh, good morning, my brother. Yeah, good morning. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, my neighbor. How you doing? I can do. Oh, do. Good day. So, uh, Mr. Yusuf, I really um, appreciate your coming here today. I I agree with a lot of the things that you actually put out this evening. 
um, I think we share something in common. Um, you you were brought up in the north, and I I grew up in the north as well. Though I still regard Plateau State as middle belt, I don't I don't want to refer it as not. So um, and I believe I I know a little or even more when it comes to politics, the political landscape in the northern part of Nigeria, because I've also worked in uh, some states in the north. Um, not central and not west of the country. So I, I will say a little about them when it comes to politics and democracy there. Uh, personally, I am one that believes that Nigeria as a country is just existing without uh, sovereignty. Nigeria is a country that has, that the people don't feel the sense of nationhood in it. I love it when you say that a lot of people are angry and uh, especially the southeastern people feel marginalized. So um, in such states where a lot of people in a given country uh, don't feel a sense of nationhood, they don't have that sense of belongingness in that country, I don't think such a country should be qualified as the most peaceful country. Uh, there is no, if there is no justice, I uh, don't think there is genuine peace um, existing anyway. Um, we are talking about not respecting women. You don't respect women, how do you want peace? Even in your homes, individually, um, if you don't respect your wife, if you don't respect your girlfriend, <laughs> I don't think there will be peace, right? Um, but um, let's let's look at it this way. Um, Vitobi, that I know, um, a lot of us here know that I'm rooting for Vitobi. I actually love it when you say that you actually uh, would have voted for P2B, uh, but I got a little uh, disengaged when you stated that uh, Atiku is the one you think will be able to fix Nigeria. That got me kind of uh, wondering why Atiku? Uh, because I know Atiku was uh, in APC. Uh, Atiku was the one that actually was going around uh, campaigning or conversing for um, Buhari to become the president. Uh, Tiku literally told Nigerians that um, uh, Buhari was going to um, provide solutions to its numerous problems. Um, then Atiku, if Atiku was that good, why didn't he help um, Buhari to fix Nigeria? Um, why did he all of the sudden decide to push back to PDP to becoming the president. Um, Atiku was a vice president. I didn't see any positive impacts that he actually brought to the table. Um, so uh, I don't know how he will be able to um, do it. I don't know the kind of magic that he's going to use to provide that uh, solution. Um, All right. We're talking so about, yeah, just, just a few minutes. We're talking about um, uh, you know, um, securing the country, providing uh, security. I think the president is supposed to be the chief security officer of a country, right? Um, what actually made Good Luck Jonathan to fail in that sector was uh, the delegation. He delegates his office, his responsibility to others, and that brought him down. Uh, but the p 2 that I know, uh, when he was the governor of uh, Anambra State, uh, I don't think Peter B ever delegated his uh, position as the chief secretary of the state to anyone. He was there in the field. He handled it uh, himself. And that was why a number of states enjoyed that peaceful uh, atmosphere. Actually, um, during Peter B's uh, time as a governor, I was in a number of states. Um, if you, I don't know if anyone knows a number of two, um, Amobia, there is a place called Amobia, just, just by the state capital, right? Uh, the governor's lodge was in Amobia, and for the governor to go to his office every uh, Monday to Friday, he has to pass through Amobia bypass, and our house was just by the bypass. Uh, prior to Peter B, Ingigia was the governor. Believe you me, most morning, um, there were, um, we as the resident of, uh, you know, on that street, we do encounter um, a lot of gunshots. Arm robbers everywhere. In short, Anambra was a den for arm robbery then. So to understand that we've mastered them, we know on Tuesdays there must be robbery on that arm robber by bypass. And the way that we do take uh, cover was to lay 
flat on our tummy whenever they started shooting because you don't know if a stray bullet would come through your window and eat on you. So, but Peter became and he was able to handle that security issues and we enjoyed that peaceful atmosphere for the eight years that he was the uh, governor. Um, so I personally, like I said, um, Obi will be able to fix Nigeria and not Atiku. Atiku is just going there to um, kind of uh, make his friends to look good. And you know what that means. So um, that's right. what I have to be right. comfortable with this. Can I, can I, Thank you. Can I, can I, I, never, I never said yeah. that Atiku will fix Nigeria. I said, I told you the difference. I said, if Obi wins, the military is a hydra. There is a lot of stakeholders in Nigeria, very small of them, but they are very disastrous. You see, when I, I, I said this, when Jonathan was there, he when he said there are a lot of forces, most of us, even the journalists, Nigerian journalists, they made fun of him. They didn't know what was he was talking about. Now, Obasanjo set up certain things in that country that is what is making the military a problem. You see, the military procurement itself, it's a very, very dangerous thing in the military itself. You see, a lot of the generals that were, were up where they made they made news of millions, money that is passing through. They, they bank accounts of Nigerian military. There are 435,000 Nigerians employed as Nigerian military. Do you know what it means to have that bank account? It was formerly in First Bank. And they move it and had, they created their own stuff. Somebody is running that. It is the same Nigeria that uh, when Onovo was an inspector, uh, AIG, IG, he knew that certain percentage of the salary was being reduced in the, in the department, in the finance department of police. See, I didn't say Atiku is going to fix anything. I just gave you options between the two of them. What is there? I have always rooted, and I told you, made it clear that OB is my choice. But the problem here is that are the Nigerian people going to back Obi when shit happens? Shit has happened in Mali. Nobody. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, wait, please, uh, please. Wait, 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 wait. Things are happening in Mali. This country's military has come in. It's all noise. Western world is talking about. We are just, we're just there. If it happens in Nigeria, yeah, maybe you two come out. We are all guessing. We are not we are not talking about reality here because the election has not happened. And by the way, you're right with Anambra State. I have interest in Anambra State. I have a little bit of interest in Suba. Uh, yeah. I stayed in Agulini. The last governor there was my very good friend of mine when he came in. And after I saw what he was doing, I, I put him aside. You can call here. I actually when Rotimi was actually fighting to become governor of River State. I was part of the team that brought the entire Rivers people to Australia for one month so that that matter can be resolved. And he became governor of Rivers. So we know, I, I'm not saying or doing anything about what is there. I'm not telling people what to do. What I'm saying, the choice is there for me to win the election. But the winning the election, my brother, there are things that needs to be Fought. Now, don't come crying later because and say it was rigged. No, you need to cut it now. Start looking for it and bring it out so that the people can actually hold those people down so that they don't go and do it. Because when it is done, it is too late. The Western world will not come to support you because Nigeria is a big fish for them to feed on. So they like it the way it is. And to be very frank with you, they are not even ready for Obi to become president because it's going to stop them from a lot of stuff. So, but the thing here is that when you say Atiku does not have it, don't judge, don't judge because it is wrong for us to do it because this is the problem. The guy has the audacity to stand in front and tell you that he doesn't need a Yoruba man or an Igbo candidate to come and tell the not. This is desperation that people need to understand. Like I said it before, yeah, the North does not believe in experts. They believe in collective negotiation. 
They don't believe in experts. You can be an expert in all fields of curing their problem. That's not their choice. Their choice is the collective process they, they work on. That is the collective process he has to go into and actually work. Get in first and then solve problem. That is what I'm saying. It's about sharing ideas to help him to do the right thing. Not just sit down here and say he has the right to win because the youths are not bad. No. Elections are not won in capitals in Nigeria. They are won in the regional side of Nigeria. The regional side is where this thing happens. All right. Uh, doctor, so, so, doctor, so when you're talking about collective negotiation of the North, are you referring to the people, the masses, or just the elite? Because if you are, if you are referring to the people... Can it, no, the people don't make the people make decisions in the south. Yeah, but there is something that I notice over the uh, over twenty years now. Um, the political landscape that I know in the north twenty years ago is not the same as what you know with um, uh, you know with what is going on right now. It's changing rapidly. The I know back then uh, there was little education, you know, among the population, and that is what the elites actually wanted, and that is why they preferred to have almajris to gather every morning um, in the corridor of an allergy to praise him. Um, they used to say, um, Renkashidere, which means no, God no, prolong no, no. your life. You know, like, you're, so, making, you're, you're, saying, you're using that word, Almanjere, which is wrong. Because you don't understand what it is. Almanjere is not what you see here. Those, those see, every, every house has different I was part of that same thing. I grew up in it. If you classify that as Almanjuri, I was one. Let me be very frank with you. Almanjuri is not what you see. There is a difference between Almanjuri and poverty, children that are street children that are actually under food. You need to understand. Almanjuri is for you to go out there and experience education in real life. It has nothing to do with the concept of what the, uh, the, the Southern and see it. They have, they, they, I still say you people cannot actually take away the difference between these two things. There are street urchins that are used by religious houses at Madras that are actually doing. Those ones are people that the children, that their families are so poor that they, they're born. And then there are people that are actually going through schools, which are actually called a mandarin. Education by street level, by real society. The North is a class system. And when I say collective negotiation, they are not doing it by calling the whole village to come and gather. The whole village has gathered with one person. That person has gone to the negotiation table for all of them. And that's the reason why you see like PDP giving all these delegates money and they are going back to share with people. This is the representation that the North is a very effective about. In the South, you can challenge them because you are educated. And this is why I say in the North, you cannot challenge an, a cleric even with your PhD. Because the guy can just put his finger up there for you to be killed and you'll be killed. And nothing will happen. But you see, this is the problem you understand. But in the South, such a thing cannot happen. No pastor can just say, go and kill you. They will go burn your church now. But in the North, they won't do it. Because it's, it's, it's part of that collection and it has been, that, that is a decision from the cleric. We need to understand this thing and we shouldn't judge them. If if a politician in the, in, the, in the north comes, he campaigns, he's campaigning on what the people he wants to hear. They want, they'll tell him, this is what we want. Can you provide it for us? And he says, yes. Once he goes there, they tell him that they want a mosque for each of the streets. And he becomes governor. He builds the mosque in each of the streets. You in the south will be saying, look at these people. They are suffering. And he's building mosque. He's wasting money building mosque. He is doing for the next election because he has given, he has delivered exactly what they asked him for election. He has delivered. Next election, they vote him again. And you'll be there complaining, what are these people doing? What type of stupidity? That is exactly the, the type of thing that happens. We know in the South what we want. These guys know what they need. It's two different things. All right. It's let me let me just say this. Let me just say this. Um, we have about... 20 minutes left. Um, uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, we don't have a lot of time. So if I call you, please go straight to just one minute. Comment or question. And then, uh, Yusuf, can you please take notes so we can go three people at the same time so that this, um, yeah. um, just, you know, I will call three people. They will say, have their say, and then you can respond to them so that we can, we can run through everybody. Um, 
tomorrow we have endless time so please um we, we will do that tomorrow we won't be able to uh, stay as long as we normally stay today so and we we'll see you next Let me see. Um, Rudolph, you can unmute. Let me see. You are muted. You are yeah, muted. Sometimes I can't. You know, the, the system won't let me. All right. Let me see. Okay. He did it. Okay. Let me see. Can, okay. Go ahead. You are doing up and up. All right. All right. So let's go to Jonaba. Jonaba, you're next. All right. Dr. Uh, Yusuf, uh, thank you for coming. I uh, think uh, I'm used to most of your view. Uh, thank you for educating your friend, Dr. Rudy, today. Uh, he needed to hear this. And uh, I hope K Kenny said that he he is school or he stay in Jaws. And, uh, he went to where he served as NYC that I forgot the name of the town last time. No, that, that was Shiroro, Shiroro local government. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> it's, a good, it's good to see you, my my brother. I think I'm, I have no too much question for you. We will talk all our talk tomorrow, Dr. Damages. All right. Thank you, John Iba. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I'll go to your next. So really, I'm a, it's nice to see you, Mr. Yusuf. Really, I I, I just listened to you with uh, keen attention. Really, you, you really spoke some sense into what we are feeling that I wish that uh, you can't take away a, a, the people's culture from them. That is how it's in the north. I served in Bauchi during my service and I feel that I interacted with some people back then, and that is their way of life. But I wish that sometimes you are the top. You, you who is well, let me say you are exposed to you. You know a lot of things. With time, we need to go back to make things better. Because if we don't do it, nobody will do it for us. That's just what I want to say. All right. Thank you, Austin. Uh, Austin, because, yeah. Austin uh, 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 Rudolph, let me, let me, let me call this. You see the disappointment we have from the Southern people is this with the little allocation that is given let's take example river state and aquibon the amount of money that is given if one of those states have actually done half of dubai and the north can see it physically let's not see the same suffering and see the same thing your people have not changed now imagine kwakwaso and all the rest building flyovers in kano in a flat land and i ask the question what the hell are they doing flyover for because they want to look like Lagos. They forget that Lagos is an island that connects water connection everywhere. You're building a uh, flyover in the north. For what? What are we really building it for? This is the thing. Neither the south that is telling the north that they are not moving, they themselves are not even moving. If Aquaibon has used half of its resources that has been given and made it look a, a little bit like, no, 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 forget about the water park and all those ones. Just like Dubai. And the North can see it, that one state in the South has moved. Lagos State, although Tinubu and his people are making noise, telling that the Lagos State, this one has done this one. If I come to Nigeria, I don't stay in Lagos State for more than two days. Because I can't breathe. I still prefer to go to Anambra, all those places. The air is fresher in that place. I spent most of my time in Nigeria when I was there, six weeks in Aguilera. In Sube, all those places I go because the air is fresh. And don't get me wrong, the Igbo man is in, in Lagos because he wants to make money. The money is there. The, the whole population of trade is there. But those things can still be done in, in the East too. Uh, China was open and everybody's going to China. What makes a Yoruba man not to go to Enugu to buy his own parts or buy property? It's just those type of things that needs to change. If the people in the South have used their location wisely, the North will be educated physically. They will see it. You don't need to go and tell them. They will change. But when you are living in poverty, you're coming to tell a poverty person that 
for winning. Now, how you they take up? You see, poor man cannot make you rich. It is only a rich man that makes you poor, uh, rich. The, the idea of being poor is between God and the poor person. I don't understand it, but we that work very hard, we work hard to try for a particular reason. So if people want to move away from a certain level, they just need to work hard. And they do, the, they do so by looking at other people that have actually succeeded in doing it. That's why some of us go out to buy books from Bill Gates. We won't read, but we see how it happen. You know? I can't buy any book from any Nigerian rich person because there is nothing they can tell me because all of them, when I mean all of them, I'm still talking about 99%. Now government money, now the treasury money, they, you can't write me a book about them. But I can buy books from these people because even though they tell me lies saying that 3,000 they will not give them, it's still something I want to see how 3,000 take what I call with this billion. It's different. So I think part of the education in North is lacking is because we that the Southerners are that, that is there, they are not showing by example. And this is a way I'll come back again, Rudolph. I talk I've talked about the leader and ruler thing. We need to understand our definition. Because in majority of Nigerians today, educated people, they can't even tell the difference between blame and criticism. When Nigerians spend their time, they blame everybody. Blame, 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 blame. We don't blame. Certainly, we don't reach to the extent with Babangida chief all our money. We never see one proof yet. Why this money still come out? And the, I, the thing here that I face with a lot of people today, you know, explain Nigerians, is that when I talk about people like Babangida, I bring this now here. Yeah, I talk about people like Babangida. So we they support them because of, no, I'm not supporting because the politicians we have today tell me one thing they've added in this country since since 1999. Compared to a man that built petrochemical, even though he chopped the money, some things they when would they see that mainland bridge? If that man has not built it today, people going to use canoe, they cross over. Some of these things here, yes, they said they brought uh, six billion dollars for windfall here and Olufala, they didn't see the money. We didn't ever see money for Nigeria because people get salary, people were paid their salary, secretariats were built, Abuja was built, uh, Abacha built Abuja, they do all those things. Where did this does money come from? Those are these, these are things that is in there. We never appreciate. We never say, and then we give all these people take chance, and they are playing games with them, and they are our mates. We are all age group. We just same people we are talking about. We are all age group. If that is the irony of it all, you know. Today you look at it in Nigeria. If you don't get first class, you don't get second class. You don't go get job. Now we in that that third class we get. We get this country today. We don't we don't work out, we don't move, go, go the level we won't go. It's our choice to move to the level. People when get second class of offer and everything, they did now. Some of them never get job for 15 years for that same country. Why do we have to sit down and keep lying to ourselves? If you, 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 you can't do that, it's, this is a country where people, they are directors, they give them cars, they give them I did, I never see car for a year again yeah, since I see they ride my motor and bicycle to go up. Who, who 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 won't give me all those things? But Nigeria, we they, we they see things where the things they fail. Tomorrow, we they blame somebody say this thing happened. When the system is there. We have a constitution that has divided us into six uh, geopolitical zones. Yet, some people still claim that they are from a state and they forget about the geopolitical zone. When politics reach, you say Kinubu uh, is qualified to come. Now, now they talk about merits. When in, in the beginning, it has always been done in a geopolitical zone. So, uh, Southwest has got one. Uh, South South has got theirs. Their, Northwest has got theirs. Now it's time for North East, North Central, and, and South East. You are saying that uh, you know, it's merit. I know this. Justice and fairness is what will only make us move forward. And if we don't have that, we will not. Whether you like, go marry your Yoruba wife, go marry your wife, marry everything, like I think. That is not the unifier we are talking about. I'm not talking about all those things. I'm talking about the reality of what we are here today on social media. These things we are seeing today, this hatred we are seeing today, it has been with us for Nigeria for a long time. It's only that it takes about three to six months before, in old, old days before social media, before you know that Obama hates you. It takes six months. But now it's real time. Now you go take notes that the person hates you. 
It has been in our DNA for long. We had that problem. It's just that we did not accept it. We live in denial in Nigeria. Great number of people live in denial. It has existed in us. It's just that we are manifesting it now very fast because of technology. Mm. All right. So, thank you. Let me put up surprise. All these things we are talking about, Nigeria is not one. This one, we are not building this country. See, brother, we know that we are not one right for time. This is the only country where we respect criminals. You know, we build monuments for criminals. We even give holiday to MKO. Some people, they, they, they raise hand, say because he win election, and they, they, they raise hand, they do the MKO. Why? Why do they not give holiday to Enauru? Where fight, where start the independence for us? How do we want to progress, for goodness sake, when we actually are doing the most useless things we support it based on religion and pride? You know, it's, it doesn't make sense. You have to look at the integrity of a human being before you start naming infrastructures uh, uh, against them. Not just because of one thing. You just go and carry something and give because you want you want rule as president. You go give MKO holiday. Now, the same MKO, they're not being used to name the University of Lagos. All of them, they fight. All of a sudden, holiday come, everybody celebrates. How do you how do you make sense? Okay, so Yusuf, um, along that line, I will let, um, we have less than some, seven minutes left. But along that line, do you think that it's good to uh, name the airport uh, after Mortala Mohammed? I want you to answer this when you take the next oh, one. The first, the first question is that well, how was the airport built? Who initiated it? Yeah, but if you, are, if you are going to say that some people are not because of their history or what they did, that they don't deserve to get a holiday. No, uh, 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 Rudolf, the reason that no, they no, publicly tell the reason why you don't like Mutala Mohammed. Why I don't like him? No, I'm not yes. saying I don't like him, but I don't know him in the historical context. Okay, we know that he was involved. Yeah, yeah, in historical context is yeah. historical context. He did, uh, according to certain uh, uh, writers and everything, because I wasn't there, he killed a lot of people during the war. Yeah. No, no, the massacre, it's not about killing people during the war by fighting, but we're talking about the war happened in Asaba, specifically. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He killed a lot of people during yeah. the war itself. Yeah. So, and uh, does this justify for him to be named after airport? Oh, that's what I'm saying. I'm asking you. Okay, the that's exactly, me. That is exactly what I'm saying. Okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not excusing him, but the reason why most people don't want him is because of that. Mm. It's because of that. Now, there comes the problem. We are all, we are the we are the ones suffering. Like my people say, dead person know they complain about pain of death. Now, person when they are alive, they cry for person when die. Now, as he pain you rich, now so you go cry long. So the thing there is this: Mutala Mohammed, in some quarters, they see him as a hero. And those people, when they were in charge, they did the needful. They put their person there. Now, not one thing. A, 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 what is a hero for? They think he saved them for the war. I, I can't judge that. I can't do. But you don't name anybody after war, especially in a country where we don't even have the good memorial for our dead soldiers. In this country where I live, when they, they when they, they do memorial for military people, it's like a holiday, my brother. It is like a fanfare because people can see what those people fought for. People can see the reason why those people died. So why are, we, why are we naming an airport after Mutala? What exactly did he do? So this is the people, the people that he represented, named, gave him. Just like, just like Buhari gave MKO holiday, because certain people have to use that as a bargaining chip. Bargaining chip. And the people need to understand that not the election in the, does not justify MKO to be named. That is not how we do things in a real world. That's not how you measure somebody all through from beginning till end before you really do something. You don't just take one. Do. I don't want to dwell. So there's a lot of drivers that needs to be built in Nigeria for infrastructures to be built. Take example, Babangida's uh, uh, headquarters for political uh, parties. 574 of them were built. Not even 30 is being used today for anything reasonable. They, all the rest, that snake and grass, nine grow inside. You know, you, you guys know how much that thing cost Nigeria to do that. Now, if a, a proper driver was there before those things were built, those things will not be accommodated by grass and snakes today. 
but the infrastructures were just built like white uh, white elephants. That's why they all went into decay. And these are things that could have been used for libraries and all the stuff, whatever, and all the stuff. But no, it just went into decay. Because we are a country where we just believe in clapping hands for infrastructure. Somebody build bridge over. What's the driver for that bridge? Tomorrow the bridge started to move side by side, side by side. That we go even take and make music. Say the bridge, they move side by side. Because there's no drivers. Okay. What's the Yusuf, I know I, I, we have to get you back. This is why I like conversations with people, different people in different parts of the world with different viewpoints. And, and Yusuf has a different viewpoint that we don't hear very often. Uh, but unfortunately, we just don't have a lot of time today because I would have liked to ask you, for instance, why is it that the North, um, people in the North oppose having loose federation? And they were the people that supported it that at the beginning of the federation. Um, Amanda Gelo was pushing for, for federalism. Uh, Zeke was the one that was actually trying to bring the country uh, together. But now it's the opposite. You know, the North is now saying they don't, but that's a different conversation. I want to give chance to Bishop and forefathers to say something because I know forefathers must be um, losing his head over immigration. You're pushing for people to leave Nigeria to come to Australia. So I want to hear from him. Bishop, you are next. Oh, thank you, uh, thank you, Thomas. I get you. There's something uh, that is something you said that is very, very critical, and we seem to be undermining in all that conversation, and that is the issue of the military. Let's not let's not even deceive ourselves. L even if all the Nigerians come out to vote for OB, because there are one thousand and one reasons why OB must be must be the next president of Nigeria, if Nigeria must remain and continue. But the truth is that there is a structure in Nigeria the same way, the same way racism and structure are affected from the Okay, Bishop, your line is very bad. I don't, I can't hear you. I don't think you should appreciate me. Yeah, okay. So well, let's go to Forefathers. We are running out, we are running out of time. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, forefathers, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, um, thanks uh, for having me, um, uh, and, uh, Rudolph. Uh, and greetings to um, Yusuf and uh, Abu Abubakar. And uh, greetings to everyone on the panel, the chat, and the viewers. Um, I guess you know me too well. I was not very happy hearing him um, basically advertising a foreign country for his people to go without, 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 this is the caveat there, without giving them encouraging them to come back you see this is the problem we can't keep saying our people should leave but never thinking about how to encourage them to come back because they don't come back they don't come back 80 percent of them don't return anymore they go have children there and your children never see the country again this is a serious damage we are doing to our own country first we lose our money from oil crude oil theft then when we use this little we have from the crude oil to buy petrol, we lose them again. Then again, we go ahead to uh, the, the little money we use to educate our people. Our people say, well, go, go, go and work for the people that are us, that we just put our money in the account. It's pure madness. It's like Nigeria is operating in such an inefficient way, it's unbelievable that we are still standing even at this rate. We have our, we have our system decaying and we are busy arguing over whether this one is our salmon and all the rest of it. Personally, I don't have any issue with uh, naming any like Abiola because what Abiola represented was is it was a symbolic uh, stuff. People name things all the time, and um, I'm trying to just rush through my points. Um, from the point of view of um, this in uh, this immigration stuff, I just wanted to touch on that front a lady too that was doing this recently. That didn't she was doing it and never bothered to think that okay, this is what I'm doing. Am I a glorified slave trader here? These people operate. We operate as if we are a slave race. Everything we do is to serve other people. Am I a glorified slave trader here? You are advocating your people to leave, no plans for them to return. Who does that? And the rate, we, the rate at which we are living right now is higher than during the time of slavery. And some of the people that are living are some of our best, some of our highly educated ones. I've trained somebody in Nigeria only for the person to go pshum, off to Western country to go and serve again. And they may never return again. This is madness. The Chinese, the way they handle these type of things is to have programs 
by which they bring them back. They contribute. As a matter of fact, the Chinese government gives their own people over the overseas money to buy up companies in the West and transfer intellectual property to their country. These are simple things. We can take control of the process. This process that is hurting us right now, if we use common sense, we can gain from it. We have people going over. Since of us who think about how we can take all the all the knowledge that they've got there and bring it back to, to our country, we are not doing that. Instead, we are saying, oh, pack up, jack up as quickly as you can. And that is how you are going to get better. You are going to build houses all you want. Houses are not going to fix your country. So that is that on that one. In terms of what we need to demand from our leaders, I really think that, you know, um, yeah, you still touched on it when you talked about how they asked their politicians to build mosques for them and the, the politicians actually build the mosque because those who are focused on what they want. We need to start understanding how to ask our leaders for stuff before they get into office. And one of them, I think that is a low hanging fruit, is the one they can do with presidential powers. That occurred to me that if the presidential powers means he can do it the very first day he gets into office. He has the power to do that. So an act that you know you want something, the president to do something, and he has the power to do it, you make him promise you before he gets into office, like Peter or, or Martin Ubu, you, they promise you that they're going to do it. You know that when they get into office, they should be able to do it the very next day or the very day they get into office. You Now you can hold them accountable for that. That's the kind of common sense we need to start having when we are dealing with our politicians and all this talk we talk about you know i always go back to one thing constantly i'm never going to let it go transparency security if you don't fix it i heard you talk about the military thing you know describing the military in a derogative way like they are um you know they are a problem in the country see it's just like a knife a knife is a problem but it can also help you cook food and might also help you save save your life from um, a criminal the point is you have to come to something that helps your people. Military is vital to any country. Uh, security is vital to any country, for any country to function. The Australia that we are in right now, the moment somebody gets stabbed on the street, the police will round up the whole area and cordon it off. They will make it look like a million people just died because it takes security very, very important. But we don't see it like that. And this, this kind of stuff, we need to start changing. That mindset needs to seriously change. And I hope that, if anything, don't worry too much about the immigration part right now and everything I've said. But the important thing I've just said today is about, because I, I was thinking about it a lot, was about what you can get the politicians to promise you before they get into office, especially the ones they can do with presidential powers. That is one easy part to force right. them to do this. All right, four fathers, right. thank you. Thank Rudolph, you. please, you know, I only have one second. I want to leave. Uh, four no, 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 you are done, John. Four four father, I, where do you live now? I just want to ask you, where do you live now? I, I, I'm, a, I'm a humble majesty here. His Majesty now. Now you know he's in the UK. Oh, <laughs> <that is> so <laughs> so see, all this stuff I'm saying, I, I, if I said it to them, they're not gonna like it too. Because on that challenge, hey. don't mind him. Um, <laughs> it's a round up. Let's go. We have to go. Uh, say guys, uh, I say thank you. They say I, uh, I am Rudolph. Uh, I, let me not blame it on Rudolph. Rudolph choose. Put the wrong time so we just decided to just do a snap one and uh, uh i'm actually hosting uh, chris daniel in australia so i'm having a tour with chris daniel from thursday all the way through to the end of the week so i, I said we're actually going to do the real program after i finish that tour and we, we sit but i'm very grateful for you guys uh, you know finding the time to listen to me and uh, sharing ideas together and all the stuff and for father, I definitely do not actually intend to bring people here. And uh, I always give people the choice. If I tell them to come and, and go back, it's not a choice. It's I'm a, always a choice believer. I believe in choice. People make their own choice. Encouragement, uh, not choice. And, and encourage them to go back. I always encourage them to go. And uh, what I don't encourage them is to send money to the country because it's wrong money they send. They go and use money for burial and wedding and sick people. Yeah, encourage them to uh, buy a uh, company, uh, encourage them uh, to uh, buy a uh, company uh, in Australia uh, and transfer it in yeah, intellectual so property rights to your we country. Will, we will talk about all this once in the near near future. But yeah, uh, but please, yeah. I have to get my one minute in, including Mr. Scribe, who just came in here. Uh, who who I have, speaking? 
Uh, it's Pansat. I haven't said anything for the one minute there. I gotta go. I got I have I, 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 you were talking for I, 15 I, minutes I, I, while I was here. I know, but I, I have to make it one minute Pansat, exactly. Pansat, yes, sir. Pansat, I, th I thank you very much, Pansat, for coming yes. and everything. So yes, I would say, uh, Rudolph, you find the right time so that we can actually bring pepper soup and everything in front of us here and do this thing so that we can freely argue we can talk over each other okay. that is a nice all right we'll well, thank you ourselves. for coming by the way yeah. uh, i'm very yeah. all, all i was going to say is that we really need you dr yeah. baba Kara. I, I want you to look at the moral clarity that's the only thing the only issue i have with you you've already said that uh you are an ob supporter that's good but you know you you have to have that you know the usage and the capacity to make firm unflinching distinctions between evil and good. If you say, okay, I'm pro B, and, and then you, you you are poetic when you're talking about that, and then you know, you, you sort of mean, we need you. Somebody Pastor, like you. Don't worry. Pastor, don't worry. We'll be no go win. We'll be no go win. Don't worry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. All right. All right. All right. All right. Mr. Uh -huh. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. We don't have okay. time anymore. Uh, Yusuf Abubakar, thank you so much. We appreciate you spending time yeah. with us. And uh, when you finish your uh, Kiss Daniel store, we bring you back. And and we want to hear from people from down there. There may be some ideas that we can use in the country. Um, uh, and by the way, because I criticized, sorry, because I criticized that lady, the next day she put a video of a Nigerian that was in the UK and founded the company in the uk then went back to nigeria and the ladies enjoying it in nigeria now so it does make a difference if somebody calls people out on what they do actually she did yeah yeah you're right you're right it's, it's no doubt about that and um, this all the things we do here it, it, it has impact so that's why i appreciate that people spend time to join us uh yusuf abubaka thank you so much thank Obi you very much Rudolph. thank you guys okay yeah. Uh, Obie, thank you so much, Kenny. Thank you, Ndubisi. Thank you, uh, Mr. Thank you, Dr. Damages. Thank you, uh, Pansat. Uh, tomorrow, we have all the time tomorrow. Austin, thank you. John Amber, thank no you. Yes, thank you. So I'll see you guys tomorrow at no 11.